Hello, today let's put some light on what Paul Carot 2.0 is all about and explain what Dr. Gavin Wood's vision for the Paul Carot's future. So this Gavin Wood's presentation at Polkadot Decoded about Polkadot 2.0 was at some points quite technical, but overall this talk was a true bomb, outlining where the Polkadot Eco is headed in the next few years. Everyone who watched this talk probably has no doubts that the future possibilities for Polkadot seem to be endless. The current version of Polkadot with deployed and running parachains is the version 1.0, so Polkadot 2.0 is bringing several major structures and also philosophical shifts in the direction of the network. Polkadot 2.0 will also bring a major modification to Polkadot's architecture. The current parachain lease model will be replaced with a system of selling so-called core time. This core time structure is believed to provide developers with much more flexibility, so parachain teams will be able to purchase core time on Polkadot either through bulk sales or instantaneous sales on a free market. So the introduction of selling of this core time on the Polkadot relay chain means that block space will be sold as a commodity. So as Gavin Wood said, developers care about deploying their code and they want to see if users use their deployed dApps. That's what matters to them the most. Developers and builders really don't want to be bothered with collecting DOT from community crowd loans that they primarily want to focus on building. So this shift from parachain slot leasing to simple buying core time on Polkadot should allow for easier onboarding dev teams and for easier transition of Web2 projects to Polkadot. The undeniable fact is that the current parachain lease model based on locking DOT for two years and on community crowd loans has not proved to be a very successful model, to put it mildly. So it simply didn't work economically, especially for those who lock their DOT in crowd loans, and it also creates unnecessary barriers for dev teams to enter the Polkadot ecosystem. And if I remember correctly, Gavin Wood even mentioned that a competition in securing a parachain slot on Polkadot is not beneficial and slows down the growth of the ecosystem. Gavin Wood also closely introduced his idea that Polkadot ecosystem will shift from currently being chain-centric to being fully application-centric. So the ultimate goal of Polkadot is to serve as a decentralized platform, allowing to build decentralized, trustless and permissionless applications, which overall benefit end-users. I really loved hearing Gavin Wood emphasizing this idea that the fundamental purpose of Polkadot is not to host chains, the main focus will now be on dApps. I mean really, this is what matters the most for the majority of community, and users need cool dApps to use, because hundreds of trustless and easy-to-use dApps is the only thing that will bring end-users to Polkadot. So now that the core Polkadot infrastructure is in place, dApps and adoption will become the main focus. Also, the definition or rather description of Polkadot has been reconsidered and introduced by Gavin Wood. Essentially, Polkadot 2.0 is a computer providing computing power for all parachains, so Polkadot is basically serving as a virtual computer, very powerful one, as it has multiple cores, currently 50. So Polkadot is not a single core computer anymore, now it has 50 cores and they all operate simultaneously, computing different things. And within the next few years, Polkadot can grow even to 500 to 1000 cores, so imagine that. So again, Polkadot 2.0 will work as a multi-core, very powerful computer, providing computing power, just like your standard laptop, and parachains deployed on Polkadot will operate on one of Polkadot's core, while all being secured by Polkadot's shared security. At the end of the talk, Gavin Wood underlined the importance of resilience of Polkadot. He emphasized that there would be no point of building Polkadot if it wasn't resilient to any future regulations and to regulatory forces aiming to somehow modify Polkadot in any way. Simply, Polkadot must be unstoppable. Gavin Wood noted that the current systems that we nowadays have in online space are not resilient at all, as they often have many centralized, hence vulnerable, points and are based on trust. And as an example of that, he mentioned this cyber attack into the database of all Louisiana drivers, 
who were publicly doxxed and had their personal data exposed. Kevin Wood even said that these Web2 systems are based on old-school thinking. He repeated that the cornerstone elements of Web3 and hence of a more secured internet are decentralization, cryptography and game theory, but even these will not matter too much if the platform itself is not resilient and unstoppable. If I had to select the main thought from Gavin Wood's talk that stuck in my mind, it would be this resilience concept. This idea really resonated with me as it implies Polkadot Network is being built with this resilience feature and will be 100% future-proof against all possible attempts from the outside to stop or modify Polkadot Network. In conclusion, the main takeaway from Gavin Wood's presentation is that Polkadot is shifting to an unstoppable, multi-core supercomputer serving as a decentralized platform providing block space and computing power for chains and decentralized applications. My view is that Gavin Wood's vision is truly honorable and incredibly ambitious, light years ahead compared to all other blockchain ecosystems, we might even say a bit ahead of its time, but I love it as Polkadot really gives us a real chance for a better internet where users and their data are not a product anymore. The only thing is that most likely such a future is still pretty far away, unfortunately. I'm hoping you enjoyed this video. See you next time.